Hello everyone, and welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Michael sat nervously on a park bench at Chancellor Park. Hello stranger, greeted a tall, slender woman who had short, dark hair and covered her face with a large pair of sunglasses. Michael became alarmed. Phyllis was told by Michael that Christine might see her. Christine would be obvious to her from a mile away, Phyllis scoffed. Phyllis clarified that Daniel had informed her that Summer's dispute with Diane was the reason Kyle and Summer had split up. Restorative justice was needed, Phyllis proclaimed, and she could not carry out her job if she hid under a rock. Michael asked Phyllis to tell him every vile detail about Jeremy Stark in the hopes that he would uncover some evidence to support her claims. Michael questioned Phyllis about her first lack of faith in him. Phyllis remembered making the decision to move forward alone, without involving others, since she had thought there was no one to turn to. Phyllis informed Michael that she would need his help in order to transform into a better, new, and improved Phyllis. Michael consented to assist his close pal. Phyllis told Michael about her fate death in private. Later, suspecting he could have a meeting set with Lauren, Phyllis questioned Michael about why he kept looking at his watch. I'm going to meet your kids, Michael retorted. Michael refused Phyllis' request to go with him, saying that she had only escaped arrest so far via luck. Phyllis said, pointing to the sky, someone up there likes me. Even though he wasn't her attorney, Michael promised Phyllis that all of her secrets would be safe with him. Michael remarked that Phyllis' return home will include making amends and performing deeds of kindness to win forgiveness. Phyllis consented to tell her immediate family every detail of what had transpired the night she had died, including how Jeremy Stark had attempted to complete the murder. Before the wrecking ball arrived, Phyllis said to Michael that she wanted to sit for a while and take in the fresh air and sunshine. When she was prepared to reveal her true identity, Phyllis assured Michael that she would call for him. Please don't keep me waiting too long, Michael retorted. Diane reappeared after Michael had gone and yelled, Phyllis, wow, you don't even try to conceal yourself anymore. Remembering her embarrassing arrest, Diane vowed to call the police and have Phyllis removed right away. Diane reminded Phyllis of the harm her actions had caused to Summer's life and Daniel. Phyllis got to her feet and vowed to make things right with her kids. Diane brought up Jack. Phyllis forewarned that Jack would become aware of Diane as someone would demonstrate just how dangerous she was. Phyllis acknowledged that she had been unable to demonstrate Diane's threat. Diane made fun of Phyllis, saying that she should flee like a coward since she had no family, friends, or witnesses who may be of assistance. The imagined meeting with Diane appeared, and then it disappeared. Phyllis appeared reflective after that. Tucker took candid pictures of Ashley at the Abbott residence as she read over notes she had written for staff recruiters. Tucker stated he wanted to get the ideal shot of Ashley as he casually peeked through the phone's screen. Ashley gave up on her duties, drew Tucker in, and started kissing him. Oh, for the love of God, get a room, Diane cried as she stepped through the front door and saw the couple locking lips. Ashley took advantage of Diane's status and the title she didn't earn by telling her she belonged at Jibot. I am tired of your accusations about me, my intentions, and my position at Jibot, Diane retorted. I deserve everything that I have. Diane asserted that Ashley despised her as a result of her refusal to acknowledge her hatred for Tucker. Yeah, Ashley, Tucker retorted with a scowl. Tucker was drawn in by Ashley, who replied, She's right. I detest you. Diane went upstairs as Ashley started kissing Tucker on the lips. Tucker noticed that the moment Diane left the room, Ashley's mood altered abruptly, and he noted this. She despises seeing us together, Ashley retorted. I detest having her around my house. I hoped she would just leave right away. Anywhere but here, that is. Tucker acknowledged that Diane would not leave unless a change was made, and he added that Ashley was too well-mannered and sophisticated to get dirty with Diane. Ashley retorted that only Phyllis would be able to finally put an end to Diane. 
Ashley was relieved to find that Phyllis had not passed away because she recalled lamenting that a world without Phyllis would be nuts. Tucker retorted, still missing in action though. Tucker pointed out that Phyllis wouldn't have time to get rid of Diane in Geno City when she returned since she would be preoccupied with defending herself against legal claims. Tucker was asked by Ashley if he had any plans in mind. Tucker speculated that with their demonstrations of affection and talk of their new business, he and Ashley might put more pressure on Diane. When Tucker told Ashley that they might even spend some time in a hot tub together while listening to music Diane despised, her eyes lit up with delight. Ashley advised Tucker to focus on hiring a headhunter and not be reluctant to recruit talent from Jabot, if necessary while keeping her attention on the business at hand. Daniel was pleasantly delighted when Jack greeted him at the Geno City Athletic Club. Daniel remembered how his mother had made a special effort to depend Jack's family. Daniel was reassured by Jack that he wasn't to blame for his mother's behavior and that because his life was going so well, he wouldn't waste time worrying about what Phyllis was up to. Daniel added that Phyllis had pretended to be murdered while he was explaining how the more she stayed away, the worse things were for her. Daniel was questioned by Jack about watching over his sister when he brought up Summer. Daniel replied he was doing the best he could. Jack asked Daniel about his personal life. Jack stated that he was satisfied Daniel's life was going well after observing Daniel and Lily exchange friendly glances from the opposite side of the room. Jack and Daniel were joined by Lily, who gleefully informed them that they ought to get champagne because Omega Sphere had caught fire in South America. Jack wished Daniel and Lily luck. Lily and Daniel were overjoyed to be successful. Lily expressed her relief that Daniel's friendship with Jack had not been harmed by Phyllis to Daniel when Jack explained himself. Daniel handed Lily his tablet and showed her a preview of a video game he had created for her as a birthday present. Daniel was still giddy from hearing the news about the success of his gaming platform. Daniel proclaimed the name Queen Liliana for his creation. Lily expressed her gratitude and that no one had ever made the entire universe only for her. Daniel informed Lily that she earned everything she had. Billy agreed over the phone with a co-worker at Chibot that Ashley ought to have informed the board prior to making an abrupt exit from the organization. Summer went into the workplace. Billy promised to call back later and hung up. Summer was curious to know if Chelsea had thought about working with Marchetti as the creative director. Chelsea wasn't quite ready, according to Billy. Billy advised Summer to think about employing a representative from Marchetti's Italian office. Summer claimed she was at a loss about who she would trust. Summer sobbed that perhaps, like Kyle, Billy's lack of concern was his method of freezing her out because she was no longer considered family after Billy dismissively suggested that she fly to Italy to look for someone. Billy emphasized to Summer that it was her self-assurance and leadership abilities that had saved Marchetti, and he said he trusted her to choose the individual who would help her run the business. Summer acknowledged her error. Billy remembered that he, too, had made mistakes in the past. Jack joined Billy and Summer. Jack informed Summer that Diane might have recommendations for a successor when he learned that she was looking for a creative director. She preferred to handle the situation alone, according to Summer. Billy told Jack that it felt like they were only a few steps away from the end of the world when Summer left. Jack stated living with Ashley and Tucker and said that he could power Chicago if he could muster the fortitude and self-control it necessary to, to refrain from yelling at Ashley. When Ashley abruptly and without warning left Jebot, Jack complained and questioned, what has she become? Billy bemoaned having to deal with the media regarding Ashley's abrupt departure all day. She wanted to punish me, Billy, Jack remarked. Billy was concerned that Ashley may once more use her patents against Jebot. Jack clarified that even if the legal department was looking into it, the merger contract would prevent such a move. Billy was interested in learning what Ashley and Tucker were up to behind their backs. Jack retorted that Ashley became stealthy and silent when she was angry. Billy continued, saying that Tucker was the epitome of the crazy and unpredictable, and that he was Ashley's mate. Which means that things could get extremely unpleasant, Jack retorted. 
Billy advised Jack that they should use a covert weapon as a decoy. Billy urged Jack to take into account an early release of their fragrance line for younger consumers, using well-known celebrities as social media advocates. Jack was too focused to look past his and Ashley's intense animosity and see each other's intended marriages. Billy said that it was Jack's responsibility to deal with the bruised sentiments and distrust among the soon-to-be newlyweds. Billy questioned Diane once she entered about her thoughts about Ashley's infidelity. Diane clarified that she had given the Legal and Human Resources Department's orders to actively contact staff members and make sure they wouldn't have any incentives to leave Jebot and work for Ashley and Tucker. In order for Diane and Jack to converse, Billy left. Why is our happiness such a threat to almost everyone I know and love? Jack asked. Diane shrugged and advised Jack to let Ashley and Tucker continue to suffer in silence. Diane urged Jack they should plan their wedding and discussed having got a terrific new job, refusing to let misery damper their good fortune. Diane felt that despite harsh competition, Jabot will get stronger. Jack was even more enthralled by Diane's vivacious persistence and pleaded with her to be married right away. Diane told Jack that she only wanted to be his wife and that it didn't matter where or when they got married. Jack pleaded with Diane to accompany him to a remote island in the South Pacific, confessing his desire to flee. Jack begged Diane not to let him be in a place where people did not enjoy that they were happy. Jack was reassured by Diane that all she desired was him. In response, Jack said, I get the girl, and I get to ride off into the sunset with her. He did this while staring tenderly into Diane's eyes. Diane exclaimed, grinning, You are irresistible. A troubled Daniel and Lily were interrupted by Summer at the athletic club. Summer questioned Daniel's decision not to check his messages, particularly those from Michael requesting them to meet with him right away. Before Lily went, Daniel gave her a kiss. Summer suggested to Daniel that possibly Michael was getting ready for Phyllis to come back to town and turn herself into the police. Daniel brought up Summer's marital difficulties, remembering how out of control she had been. Summer sobbed as she realized that her business was going through a significant upheaval. She wanted she could talk to Kyle about it to express her love for him and how much their marriage meant to her. Summer sobbed because she felt like Kyle and her were total strangers. Summer anxiously looked at the door, hoping Michael would show up soon. Summer said Chance had told her she might be arrested soon after their mother was taken into custody. Summer was reminded by Daniel that she had enabled their mother to place her in that predicament. Daniel was questioned by Summer about his seeming lack of concern for what might happen to their mother. Daniel clarified that he cared, but only to a point. Summer revealed that she had acted without hesitation in helping their mother because she knew that Phyllis would have done the same for both her and Daniel. Summer remembered how things had changed for their mother after they had abandoned her. Summer sobbed as she said that despite risking everything for her mother, she had to pay for Phyllis' death. Summer and Daniel were joined by Michael, who warned them to get ready since Phyllis was about to make a reappearance. Michael revealed to Summer that her mother held herself accountable for Summer's marriage's current status. Michael claimed that he might be able to show that Phyllis had fallen under Stark's oppressive influence and that Stark had intended to take her riches. The EMT named Carson, in Michael's memory, held the key to Phyllis' case. Michael clarified that he and Victor had been unsuccessful in finding Carson. Find Carson, Summer screamed. They had to. Tucker listened as Michael instructed Summer to track down Carson immediately in order to assist Phyllis. Phyllis grabbed up her phone while still perched on the park seat, sent a text of every one of her family and friends as well as Summer, Daniel, Michael, and Lauren. Phyllis expressed regret for inflicting pain and said she had grown from her errors. Phyllis acknowledged she had lost and that until she accepted Diane's victory, she was unable to regain control of her life or find peace. Phyllis took a seat and contemplated for a bit. Phyllis asked aloud to herself, defeated. Diane came out on top. What the? Oh, no way. No, what do you have to say? I who? Phyllis, no. Phyllis tapped her phone quickly while yelling, delete, 
delete, delete, delete. Diane won. Phyllis cried in mockery. Oh ha, huh. stop hiding now. It's finished. I'm emerging from hiding. Here I am, guys, ready or not. Guess what, this time, I'm going to complete the task that I began. Phyllis put on her sunglasses and walked defiantly away. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.